watercolour versus acrylics. In this video we're going to look at the differences and the application methods of these two mediums. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, we look at watercolour, mixed media, drawing and all sorts of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now, over the years, I've taught in many different mediums, but I have always specialized in watercolor painting. It's definitely my favorite. However, I've also done acrylics. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the differences between watercolors and acrylics. So if you've followed my channel mostly for watercolors, or perhaps you haven't started any kind of painting yet because you've just been learning to draw, then this video is going to be useful for you. However, if you've just randomly found this video in search and you're coming from a background of acrylics, perhaps, and you'd like to know a little bit more about watercolors, it's going to be be equally useful to you too. We're going to cover 10 basic points. We're going to look at everything from the sort of brushes you use, the sort of palettes, the differences between the paint itself and how to use and apply it. Now we won't be completing a full painting tutorial in this video, it would be too long, but I will be pointing the camera downwards from time to time and demonstrating things like swatches. If you're looking for a full beginner's acrylics painting lesson, I'll have that for you next week. In the meantime, let's get on and talk about the first difference between watercolors and acrylics. So firstly, let's look at how you buy the paints, what format they come in and the price comparison. So here I have some tubes of paint. Now, just before I start, I will just say that if you hear any sort of loud noises and whistling in this video, we have a storm approaching fast here in the UK. It's going to be a lot of high winds, so I apologise if you can hear any of that. There is nothing I can do about that. So I've got some tubes of watercolour paint and some acrylics here. So you can see that one of the main differences is in the size of the tubes. Now you may think once you start comparing prices that actually acrylics are very cheap. They can seem that you get a lot more paint for your money and of course you do. However, watercolours have a lot more pigment ratio to binder, which is why sometimes a watercolour like this can last for many months, particularly if it's a staining colour, whereas you'll get through acrylic paint much faster. Just like watercolours, you have exactly the same things going on where you have very cheap paints, and some of these old acrylics up here are very cheap, and then you have the students' ranges, and then you have the artist ranges. So these two here that I'm holding are artist range, and these colours were sent to me by Jackman, so just a bit of a discussion claim I did not pay for these paints here. The video is not sponsored by them but I did get these paints for free and if you'd like a discount off any Jackman's paints they ship worldwide I'll leave a discount code for you in the description of this video that is an affiliate code so I do get a small amount if you purchase any of those paints but you don't pay any extra yourself. So that's the first thing we're looking at is the size of the tubes. Also the actual format that you get the paints in. So watercolours will come in little blocks. Acrylics never come in blocks and we'll discuss why that is later. Perhaps you already know. And you also get acrylics in tubs and tubes. So these are just some old ones that I pulled out. I've had these for many years. In fact these were just craft paints and I was really just using these for things like wall murals. But you do get artist paints in tubs and bottles like this as well. It is something just to be aware of if you go to an art shop particularly if it's one of those broader shops that sells all sorts of different things and you get stuff in bottles like this they may not be the highest quality they may just be craft quality but that's not to say that artist paints never ever come in those large bottles because many of the artist ranges do sell larger bottles for professional artists because they get through them much more quickly another thing you'll notice is how much bigger my tub of white is and this is something you want to bear in mind when you're buying yourself a set of acrylic paint you want to get a very large white you're going to get through more white paint than anything else I'll explain more about that later in the video so one of the main differences between watercolor and acrylics relates to the surfaces that you can apply each medium to so let's look at that next so what can you paint watercolour and acrylics on? So I've got a piece of watercolour paper here. Now I can paint my watercolours on this. In fact, watercolour paper is pretty much the only surface you want to be painting watercolours on. Now, of course, somebody's going to come into the comments and say, well, you know, you've got this product here. If you apply it to canvas, you can put watercolour on canvas. Yes, those products exist. And yes, they do allow you to paint watercolours on multiple different surfaces. But the truth is that watercolours are just best on watercolour paper. It's their comfort zone. It's where they work 
work best. Now the same can't be said for acrylics. Can I paint acrylics on this watercolor paper? Yes, I can, but I can also paint acrylics on a multitude of other surfaces. I can paint them on wooden board. I can paint them on canvas board like this stuff here, still in the packet. Perhaps we'll open that next week. I can also paint on box canvas like this. I'm trying to get so you can see the edge of it there. Let's hold it up like this. There you are, I can paint on canvas. You can pretty much put acrylics on any surface at all. And they're especially good for things like wall murals. Now, perhaps you're asking me, can I paint watercolors and acrylics on the same surface? Well, yes, you can, but you have to do it in a certain order. So if you're working on paper, you absolutely can paint watercolors and then paint acrylics on top once your watercolors are dry. I wouldn't do it the other way around. In fact, I experimented it with myself years ago, so I've always got to find out if these things work. And watercolors just don't sit well on top of acrylic paints because they block the absorbency of the paper. But certainly, if you're working mixed media, you can do it the other way around. So let's look now at what sort of palette you should use for each of these mediums. So let's look at options for palettes. Now, if you're painting in watercolour, you can use ceramic palettes or ceramic dishes like these. A lot of watercolour artists use plastic palettes like these. They're very good for taking to art classes. Some people say that the paint beads up a bit more on this sort of palette. Personally, it doesn't bother me, but you know, if that's you, then a ceramic palette may be better. You can also use lots of little sort of disposable dishes like these. I rinse them out and use them again. And so those are your options for watercolours. Now with acrylics, you have to be a little bit more careful. Now with a plastic palette like this, you can see that it has already become stained and that's just using watercolors. Now, if you put acrylics in a plastic palette, you can find that it can bond to the palette. It depends on the materials used for making the palette and depends on the brands of acrylics, but they really can be very hard. In fact, sometimes they can be impossible to remove from plastic palettes. So you really want to avoid using a plastic palette for acrylics. Now, ceramic is different. You can use a ceramic dish or you get ceramic palettes in all different shapes, just as many shapes as the plastic ones. And although they'll dry on this, what will happen is if you run it under a hot tap, you can dissolve it. You always want to be careful with acrylics to dispose of them as much as possible in the bin and not get them down the sink because that's quite uh, bad for the environment. Another option, if you don't want to carry around big um, heavy palettes like this, is to use something like this. This is a tear off palette. So these are made of paper and you just tear one off and you use it and then you throw it away. You can also use the large glass palettes that are used by oil painters. You can use wood as well, but you won't clean that off very easily. My default when using acrylics is to use the ceramic palette. Another thing I've seen some people do is use maybe a dish and sort of line it with um, cling film or plastic wrap and then sort of dispose of the whole thing in one. I don't like that. Again, it's just more environmental plastic waste. A final option is to use something called a stay wet palette. Now, I don't have one to show you. You can buy ready-made ones or you can indeed make your own with the aid of something like a lidded sandwich box. There's lots of tutorials online showing you how to make those. If you want me to put one of those up, I'll do that for you as well. And the idea of a stay wet palette is that you can close the lid and your acrylics stay wet for some time. And it also helps them to stay wet whilst they're working. Acrylic paint dries very quickly. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. As always, if you're enjoying this video tutorial, can I ask you just quickly to press that thumbs up, that like button, please. It really makes a big difference to my channel. If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a nice comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people, which helps my channel to grow, which enables me to make more videos for you. So the next one is really important. What sort of brushes can you use for each of these mediums and how should you clean and care for them? So I've got some brushes here. So let's look at the watercolor brushes first of all. Typically they have a short handle. I mean, they all across acrylics and watercolor, they come in lots of different brush shapes. I'm going to go through some of those in a future video. But here we're just looking at the type of brush and they tend to have a fairly soft, silky feeling bristle to them. These ones are synthetic. I don't use animal hair. Traditionally, they've also been made of things like sable and squirrel hair. Now your acrylic paint brushes will have a slightly longer handle generally not as long as oil painting brushes. The reason these have a longer handle than 
your watercolour brushes is because they tend to be used on canvas and it tends to be a little bit easier to end up leaning on your canvas if the whole thing is wet at once and so that's why these brushes tend to have a little bit of a longer handle so you can get some distance between yourself and the surface that you're working on. You'll notice as well that the bristles tend to be lighter sort of creamy white colour. This isn't a given but this is often the case that the bristles are lighter. They're also firmer, stiffer and somewhat coarser and rougher. Traditionally they may have been made from things like hog's hair. Nowadays they're usually synthetic and the reason these brushes are a little bit stiffer is that acrylic paint is very hard wearing on your brushes and once it dries on your brushes it can ruin them and stay there forever. So there's a little bit of a difference in the painting practice and the way that you use the brushes. Now can you use watercolour brushes for acrylic painting and vice versa? Absolutely you can. However I wouldn't advise you to use your best watercolour brushes for acrylic painting. As I said it can be hard to remove all of the acrylic paint and you can just find that your brush doesn't last as long and that lovely fine point disappears off it quite quickly but if you've got some older watercolour brushes yes you can use them. Stiff acrylic brushes like these are great for scrubbing out techniques in watercolour so there's no exact rule about the type of brush you use but generally for acrylic painting you'd use something like these. Now when I was teaching real life classes I used to get my students in an absolute paranoia of me seeing them leaving their brushes standing up in a water jar because there's nothing that will bend and age your brushes faster than leaving them bent up in a water jar and I used to get very very picky about my students taking their brushes out and laying them on the table. However I used to relent a bit with acrylic brushes. Now although no brushes will do well standing in water for a length of time apart from anything else it can loosen the glue around the handles, it can bend the bristles however with acrylic painting you have to keep that brush wet so you either have to rinse it after use and place it on the table or you can leave it standing in the water jar for short lengths of time because you need to keep it wet don't allow your acrylic paint to dry on the brush so both watercolors and acrylics are water soluble during use however once they dry there's a big difference between them there's also a difference between the amount of water that you should mix in each media so now we're going to look at water solubility re-wetting and how much water to use so I've got a sample here with some acrylic paint here, that's the brighter red, and some watercolour paint here, that's the crimson. Now don't take any significance from the difference in colours because they are just literally different colours, but I'm going to add some water to them. Now this paint has been applied and allowed to dry, so let's put some water across the top of our dry acrylic paint and look at that it is going nowhere. It has now become a type of plastic, it's completely dry, the pigment is fixed and it's not going to move. Now here is my dried watercolour paint so here we see the difference. So although the acrylics are water soluble in use as soon as they dry they are no longer water soluble. So what does this mean for your actual painting practice? So let's get some acrylic paint here I'm going to continue using my watercolour brush just because it's an old one and I've got it on hand here. So what we can do is we can apply our paint without any water at all. So we can pick it up like this and apply it quite thickly. We can also water the paint down and we can spread like this. And if we continue to add water, we can get somewhat of a watercolour effect. Now acrylic paint can be used to mimic oil paints, it can also be used to mimic watercolours but it won't do watercolours as well as watercolours and it won't do oils as well as oil paints. So acrylic is best used on its own terms. Next we're going to look at opacity and transparency and how you adjust the transparency and the opacity of each medium. Now what about adding this much water to it? Is this a good idea? Well frankly it's not too much of a good idea. So although you can add water to get it to move more easily, you shouldn't be adding too much water to your acrylics and the reason is that this can affect the stability of the paint and the way that it adheres to the surface. Now there is a sort of a disclaimer there which is that if you are working acrylics on watercolour paper you can add a bit more water because the absorbency of the paper will help the acrylic paint to stay stable and to stick to the surface but if you're working on board or canvas or something that's been prepared and isn't absorbent then you don't want to be adding too much water to your acrylic paint. So what do you do if you want your acrylic paint to be really transparent? Well luckily there's a product for that. There are lots of mediums that you can get with acrylics but this one here is some acrylic gloss medium. 
So what this does is it's going to allow your acrylic to become transparent without compromising the binder that you have in acrylic paint. So we can pick up some of this gloss medium. It looks white, but once you've got it mixed, it's fairly transparent and we can mix it with our acrylic paint like this and it will then become more transparent. You'll be able to glaze it over the top of other colors. It's quite shiny as well. And although it's hard to show on camera, it looks much better than just diluting with water, which can make the acrylic paint look somewhat grainy. So your acrylic gloss medium is one of many mediums and it's probably the most popular one. You get others just like you do with watercolor, like iridescent mediums. But the acrylic gloss medium is one that I think is really, really useful and quite invaluable when painting with acrylic paints. It's going to allow you to do glazing techniques and to adjust underneath layers, just like you would with watercolor. And one last thing to add here is that watercolor is considered a transparent medium and acrylics are considered an opaque medium. Does that mean that every acrylic paint that you buy will be fully opaque? No, it doesn't. And does that mean that every watercolor paint that you buy will be fully transparent? No, it doesn't. You get semi-opaques in watercolor painting and you also get some acrylics and some brands of acrylics that are a bit more transparent than others. There are very few things in life unless you're looking at a house brick that are fully opaque. And at the end of the day, many of these paints are still using natural pigments and that's going to affect how transparent and how opaque they are in reality. So as I said, I'll have a full acrylics painting tutorial for you next week on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss that one. But in the meantime, let's just have a discussion about how you might start each painting because it's quite different the way you start watercolors, the way you start acrylics and how you progress through the painting. So let's talk about the painting process. So I've got a photograph of a flower here. Now, if I were about to start painting this in watercolor, I would be thinking about working strictly light to dark. And I would probably consider taking some masking fluid and blocking out any light areas, any little white details, and certainly the details on this stamen. So I'd be blocking out my whites, reserving my whites, or even just noting them on the drawing so that I could paint round them, as I wouldn't traditionally be using white paint. But in acrylics, I would take a different approach. Now, there are very few mediums where it looks good to have the support, which is the paper or the canvas, on show at the end. So if you have gaps of canvas and things showing through paintings, I mean, there obviously there are exceptions and some people make it work, but generally speaking, it doesn't look that great. Now, the only two mediums that I've found that consistently for everybody looks good if you can see the support would be watercolors where you have the white of the paper on show and would be something like a traditional lino cut printmaking where again, you use the white of the paper for your lightest values. But with oils and acrylics, it's often a good idea to block out everything to start with with some kind of base color. Now you have to be uh, careful and think about how you're going to get your drawing to show through. Some people block out their whole canvas for acrylics first and then a draw on top, either with a pencil, charcoal, or even just a fine paintbrush and a little bit of watered down paint. Now, what color would you use to block out the whole canvas with? That's really dependent on the effect you want. Now, you could go for something that's completely crazy because not much of that original color will probably be on show at the end. So I've seen people do city scene of gray skyscrapers and things and block out the canvas originally with bright pink. And then you get these little flashes of pink showing through that can look quite modern and quite fun. I would generally start to block out my canvas with maybe a lighter color. In the case of this picture here, you could use something like a light green. I might do it fairly watered down in order that you could see the pencil marks that I'd made through the picture. I would tend personally to avoid using charcoal for my underdrawing. I'd either use pencil or I would use watered down paint. And again, if I was going in with dark first, I would paint white on top or a light color in order to sketch out my flower. Or I might, as I say, go in with a light or a mid-tone, just thin enough that I could see my original drawing through that first layer and then work up from there. So you're going to start quite differently in acrylics. You're going to start by blocking out most of the canvas with a layer of paint. Another thing that's different in the acrylic process is the idea of working fat over lean. So this is, um, if you've done any oil painting, this is something you'll also know from oil painting. What that means is that you start with thinner layers of paint and work up to thicker layers of paint at the top. And that ensures that everything adheres properly and that it layers up nicely and that you don't get cracking. You rarely get cracking with acrylics anyway, but it's definitely a thing in oil painting. So you're going to work in your acrylics 
fat over lean and so the first layer of paint that you put on is going to be the thinnest and then you're going to work up any thicker layers later on. So next we're going to look at colour mixing and tone. Now whilst the principles of colour mixing work across all mediums, if you mix yellow and blue you're going to get green no matter what medium you're using. There are some differences between the use of colour in acrylics and watercolour, particularly the use of white paint and how light or dark they dry down. So as I said colour mixing and colour theory is the same through all mediums but one of the differences that you need to get your head around with acrylics is that you're not going to use water to lighten your paint. So with watercolour you just if you want a lighter colour you just add more and more water. But what you're going to do with acrylic is you're going to mix white paint in to lighten your colour. And here we are mixing the white paint in and I can get a lighter colour like this without as I said messing up the integrity of the paint by over watering it. Another thing to consider is that whilst watercolours can dry significantly lighter maybe up to 50% lighter acrylics have a tendency to dry darker. Now acrylic paints are much thicker than watercolours so we're going to talk next about the differences between how you get a texture effect in acrylics as opposed to how you would get texture in your watercolours. So let's talk about adding texture to your paint. Now I have done multiple multiple videos on this channel about adding texture to watercolours. It's usually done by some kind of mixed media technique or involving other things or physical items. You might use cling film, you might use salt, you might use a granulation medium or granulating colours. As I said lots of videos already on that subject on this channel. I even have a full watercolour painting course all about concentrating on textures if you're interested in that one. So do seek out those other videos on my channel if you're struggling with watercolours because the thing with watercolours is you can't really use the paintbrush to add texture whereas with oils and acrylics you can because the paint is thicker. So here I've got my red and I've added some yellow and what we can do is you know we can pick these up and we can literally paint with both at once. You can do some fun techniques where you literally have one colour on one side of the brush and another colour on the other side of the brush so you can leave your brush strokes on show like this. It's another benefit of those rough acrylic brushes. We can add some of the white in there and we can start getting a whole load of texture just from the brush marks itself and the fact that the paint doesn't run or move very far from where you put it. You can also of course go on top of other areas that you've pre-painted and acrylics dry really quickly often much faster than watercolours particularly if you're working on a non-porous surface. So we've covered all sorts of points in this video there's one other thing that I just want to speak about. It's not really part of this video, but if I don't address it, I know I'll get loads of questions in the comments. So we're going to talk about gouache and acrylic gouache. So what are these? So gouache is a type of opaque watercolour. It's very chalky and very flat. It was originally used by designers and graphic artists to get flat colour. Now, something recently has come out called acrylic gouache. Now, acrylic gouache is gouache that is mixed with acrylic binders. So if you're getting confused about these, the way I want you really to think about them is that gouache is compatible with watercolours. It's a type of watercolour. Acrylic gouache would more be a type of acrylic. So in other words, it will look like gouache paint, but it's going to behave like acrylic paint. So it's not going to re-wet once it's dry. And that's an important thing to remember. Now, although I've been teaching acrylics in real life classes for years, I haven't taught them before on my channel. So do let me know in the comments how interested you are in learning acrylic painting there are any other types of acrylic tutorials you would like to see or perhaps you've done lots of acrylic painting already I'd be really interested to hear your comments on that before you leave this video don't forget to pop into the video description I have so many free things there for you I have some free downloadable pdfs I even have a free course that you can take you can also find out all about my online paid courses and my patreon membership if you've enjoyed this tutorial but you find you're really struggling with your drawing and drawing is really necessary for getting a good result in painting I'm going to link to one of my most popular drawing videos. You can watch that one right now.